What's going on everyone? My name is Jake and I am a contract audio engineer and sound enthusiast. I know there are a lot of people out there looking to learn the art of music production and sound engineering through online resources. And I'm sure you know that there is so much to learn. Because of this, one of the most basic concepts of sound engineering and music production is often overlooked. These concepts have to do with what sound actually is, how it works, and how we as humans perceive it. So I wanted to create these quick explanation videos to give you that information in a very timely manner so that you can later apply and better understand what you are actually doing when recording, mixing, and mastering. So let's waste no more time and get right into the video. Out of all the measurable concepts of sound, amplitude is a little tricky to understand. This is because there are significantly less patterns and consistency in the way we measure amplitude. If you watch the first episode, you will know that sound compresses and rarefacts and amplitude refers to the intensity of these compression and rarefaction cycles. Let's go back to our waveform where we learned about the period and frequency of a sound wave. Now, if we add a y-axis to our waveform, we can start to visualize the amplitude of our sound wave. The higher the peaks hit and the lower the valleys are, obviously depicts that the sound wave will have more amplitude. Intensity and amplitude is simply created by how much force and tension is being put on our vibrating membrane. This is quite easy to demonstrate. This is a drum software module called Easy Drummer, and through this I can show you how intensity is perceived. Now the only control that I want to show you is this velocity control, and what the velocity control depicts is how, with how much intensity the drumstick will be coming down upon our vibrating membrane, which in this case is going to be a snare drum. Now another thing to note is I have five blocks here, and these little dots within these blocks represent our snare hit. Now, what you should also notice is that with each block that I move to, our velocity control goes up. And with this, I want to show you how we perceive a change in intensity through what we hear. So let's take a listen. So hopefully by now it makes sense that amplitude is perceived as what most know as volume. But did you know that the proper term for volume is actually loudness? Loudness is how loud someone perceives a sound to be. And this means that loudness is actually a subjective term and can differ from person to pe person depending on how sensitive their ears are. Because loudness is subjective to the person, amplitude requires an arbitrary scale. What I mean by arbitrary scale is that it is not based off of a direct measure, such as cycles per second, but based off of a mathematical formula that is calculated from the perceived intensity. This allows for us to refer to a level of loudness more consistently. Without it, different levels of intensity could be misrepresented depending on how each person perceives the sound. The true application of this formula can be seen in sound pressure meters. You may have seen these at outdoor concerts. They are used to measure how loud the show is, usually to make sure the concert is within the noise ordinance. How these work is that they rate the intensity of the sound and use the formula you have learned to give a decibel reading of the show. Finally, it is important to understand that because amplitude is subjectively perceived, there are many different scales that reference different standards. For now, let's only focus on the scales that relate to perceived loudness of the human ear. DBA refers to equal loudness to the human ear, now, the human ear hears frequencies at different levels. This graph is called the Fletcher-Munson curve. It is also called the equal loudness curve because it demonstrates how loud certain frequencies have to be to be heard equally across the whole frequency spectrum. From this, you'll notice that it takes much more intensity for the human ear to hear 40 hertz than, say, 5 kilohertz. While 5 kilohertz is audible at a very low sound pressure level, it almost takes 50 decibels for 40 hertz to become audible. The difference between dBA and these other decibel measurements is that these do not correlate as much to how humans perceive frequency and amplitude, but refer to a flatter overall curve. If you are interested in learning more about sound, make sure to stay tuned for more quick explanation videos that cover the nature of these concepts. Thanks for tuning in.